Today I have the pleasure to present, to co-present with René. So you have seen all his work today and uh, for the people that was here yesterday uh, on ProxySQL. So he's the founder, the main developer, and the one like if you, you saw Colin Slight that spent all his night uh, developing, it's him. So uh, you can say thank you for, uh, for all his work. Yeah, and I am the one that wakes him up during the night to, to fix stuff, but uh, <laughs> so it, it, it's a shared uh, <laughs> work. Uh, first, uh, I want to ask you guys, who knows what data masking is? Eh, not much, okay. So from the guy who knows it, who needs data masking? Some of them, yeah. Okay, so uh, first, let's say the, the, this is the most fun part of the, uh, of the presentation, the most interesting one, no. So everything I say here is just, you know, yeah, it's for example, you can test it, don't try to go uh, to prediction with what I said and say, oh, but Fred says it's like that. Yeah, this is for, you need to test if you want that, uh, be sure of it. This is just, let's say, I want to show you something about ProxySQL. Everything that guy says, it's written in stone, so you have to, to follow uh, him and uh, this is, so this safe harbor is only for me, not for him. <laughs> so let, let's start by who we are. So. This is René. I will let him introduce himself. Hi, René. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you can follow him on Twitter, and uh, he's the Proxy SQL founder, right? And you also work at Dropbox. Yes. So this is me. You can follow me on Twitter for people who likes Twitter. Sorry. And. Uh, so uh, I'm managing MySQL for a long of time, and I'm DevOps believer, but nothing to do with that today. So no worries if you don't like DevOps. So first, let's talk about what is Proxy SQL. So this is the MySQL data stargate. That's it. You, this is all you need to know. If you need to know a bit more of details, but yeah. you, you have had a lot of it. Yeah. So basically, I mean, it was already introduced in the previous session, so for who was not here, uh, the idea is that a proxy has to be a middle layer between the application and the database server. So in my vision is really, uh, it's, it's a gate that communicates those, those two layers. And the while staying in the middle between those two layers is able to do a lot of things, like query routing, uh, uh, processing of, of the query, like blocking them, or forwarding somewhere else, rewriting them, caching. And of course, the session, this session is about data masking. So again, this is one of the options that you can do having a middle layer in the middle. And Thank you, Rune. So yes, this session is not about everything in ProxySQL. You saw uh, the previous session. It's more about like the queries uh, rewriting uh, that we're gonna do. So. Why do we would like to use ProxySQL as data masking solution? Because it's open source and free like in beer. So who knows other solution for MySQL to do data masking? Nobody? Zveta? Yeah, you can find some on Google, like GreenSQL, for example. But this is quite costly, right? They are, they, are, they are quite expensive. So it depends for what you need. But let's first talk about data masking. Uh, I didn't l think about making a slide uh, on that. Uh, but the, what do we want to, um, let's say, to resolve with this data masking? What's the problem? The problem is that sometimes you have developers and you have production data, and developer wa needs a copy, or just they need to access in read-only the data, the production data, but maybe your data is sensitive. You have sensitive information there that you don't want that any developers in your, uh, in your let's say, uh, enterprise have access. Maybe you have students that works there or whatever. And so you say, okay, maybe we have data that we need to mask. So the data should be there to performance to see, uh, okay, you need to retrieve, you need to sort or whatever, but it should be masked. You should not see it, right? So this is just about that. Uh, I, I will talk about that uh, also later, but currently there is no, uh, there is none very good solution on data masking uh, right now. So this is one option uh, that we did. So the other solution are very expensive or they are just not working or not working properly and for the price sometimes it's not that good. Uh, this one is not worse than the other solutions 
uh, but because they are none are perfect. So if you have seen a, a bit of uh, Joro, if you want to discuss about Joro, he, he has a talk uh, previously. Uh, he's the security expert uh, in MySQL. Uh, yeah, it's always possible uh, to hack stuff or to, to deal with uh, security, so watch out. So the best solution, if you really want to have a data masking, it would be to integrate this inside of the server. For example, just after the Handler API. So when the you get the storage engine gets the data, that you modify the data there before exposing it to uh, to the client. But yeah, this is uh, I think this is a lot of work, and uh, currently uh, it's not uh, in our roadmap uh, to do so. Maybe in the future. So what is the concept of data masking using um, uh, proxy SQL? So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use regular expression. I'm very sorry about that because I will show you the regular expression after. Uh, we are very, let's say, we are old in the IT world. So we are using Perl regular expression. So uh, sorry for, for people who, who hate that. Uh, but you will see they are very easy. Uh, so what we want to do is we get the data and before we send that data to the client, we want to modify it. So we want to say, oh, we have some rules, and for example, an easy one, we don't want that the developer or this user cannot see the credit card numbers. Makes sense that you don't want to, to, uh, to, to share all your credit card numbers or something like that. Yes? Yeah, this is just, no, my example is not, uh, it's just with credit card numbers. So I know you're not allowed, like I said, there is a, uh, you remember what I said? Uh, it's just for example, and the numbers you will see are not real, so don't try them. <laughs> so what I mean, any data you want, emails or whatever, you don't, you, if you have some data that you don't want to share with the developer, you need to hide it. So in this case, when the developer will do a select, we need to find, oh, this uh, column we need to hide, and we need to hide it and then return it. So this is what uh, we're going to do, in fact. So first, how we do that? So in Proxy SQL, we need to create a user. So it has a, so managing Proxy SQL. Maybe it was not obvious, uh, or it was too fast, or you were not in the previous sessions about uh, Proxy SQL. But the admin inst admin interface is just SQL, almost uh, standard SQL with some keywords just specific for uh, Proxy SQL, of course. But it's very easy. So if you want to create a user, you're gonna do insert into MySQL user and give uh, a user and a password. So in this case, we create a user name called uh, devil. First thing we need to do, like I told you earlier, we want to hide this column, right? The non-credit card column. We want to, to hide it. And uh, so, uh, so w what you're gonna do is to check for this column. But people can do select star, right? So we want to avoid that too. So if the developer do select star, we need to avoid. Say, select star, you cannot do it on, on this table, right? So we need to create some rules to, uh, to stop this and all variant of select star. So if the table is, is uh, part of many tables, uh, we need to do uh, the same, so hide this name for every table. This is how it works, but this is also a constraint currently. So it will, uh, so let's say you want to uh, hide an email in, uh, I don't know, in user table, but you want to hide an email, same column name, in another table. Uh, here, in this case, it won't work. They will both be hidden. So this is uh, one of the limitations we have. So the second rule, we need to mask the field, right? So when the field is selected, we will need just to replace, uh, in my example, uh, what I will do is I will show the column and I will just show the first two characters or numbers or whatever you want, just to and then put X's, right, to, uh, to mask. But at least why I play the, the first two characters is in case you want to sort uh, in, your exam, in your query or whatever, so you, you can do it. You want also to keep the column name because if you do, okay, select uh, uh, email, 
and then you do a lot of changes there, you want that uh, in the result you still have email. So because what we do, we rewrite a query. So we will send a query to uh, MySQL, and the query we sent, it's about changing already when we send it to, SQ, to, to MySQL. So we need, but we need to return the, the name. So an example, this number will become uh, like this. <clears throat> so if we want to mask this CCNUM from the table customer, we will need seven rules. So this is the rule number one. So uh, as you can see, yeah, you see a very nice mouse pointer. <laughs> so as you can see, uh, yeah, the first one is quite easy to understand. We are looking for this CC number, right? And uh, if we have it, we will replace it. So this is uh, not uh, complicated, but we need to find because people, and I will discuss that uh, after, uh, they put some quotes, they put some uh, parentheses, they will do everything is possible to get that information. So we need to, uh, to try to, to focus on all that. And then it becomes a bit more complicated. So, uh, yeah, like I told you, I like Perl. Uh, so this is also, we will try to find characters, to find our, uh, uh, what we are looking for, and then we will make a concat, in fact. So what we're going to send to MySQL is just, okay, we do not tell it, give me the CCNUM, just give me the two first uh, characters of CCNUM, plus co uh, concatenating with, uh, with the X we want, okay? So we don't send the, the full request to, uh, to MySQL. So this is a rewrite of the query, in fact. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, basically, as uh, we, this is a completely rewrite of the query. One of the important thing to notice, if you're familiar with regular expression, of course, this, you have those that are nothing more than reference to the matching pattern. So this refers to this one, this one to the other one, and so on. So you can. Um, and the thing, this is not possible with uh, the MySQL rewrite plugin. Doing back reference. And you cannot do that also with uh, um, regular expression. You need the per regular expression because we have also caseless and global here. So we want to do it every time uh, it happens. So this is, uh, so if you are you familiar with ProxySQL, maybe you have never seen this. And this is because I uh, asked Rene to, uh, to do that and it will be released soon, right? So you don't, yeah, you can compile the code, but there is no packages with uh, this uh, information yet. So then we have extra rules again, but I won't detail them all. As you can see, uh, they are, it's fun. So also what we're gonna do here is that if somebody do a select everything from the customer, we're just gonna send to the, um, uh, to the user sending the query. That is not allowed. Uh, to get that information. You can put everything you want there, of course, but uh, so this is the message. Every time somebody will go, uh, the developer, that user will do a select star, for example, in this case, we receive, okay, you are not allowed to do that. So we return uh, an error. Again, same information because we need to uh, take care of uh, several different cases that I will show. So what are the limitations? The limitation is this, this is supported only with ProxySQL uh, big or equal to 1.4, uh, not uh, the, the previous version, right? So all fields uh, of the same name, this is what I, I was saying before, will be masked even if you say, okay, this is for this table. We don't check about table in this case because maybe you can join several tables then it will be uh, very complicated. If you find a very nice regular expression to do it, feel free uh, to send it to me, I will be very, very happy. But currently, so all the fields with this name will be masked uh, and however is the, the name of the table. So, of course, regular expression are not, uh, let's say, uh, always safe and maybe the, the seven rules I give you here are not enough. Maybe somebody will come with a fancy solution. I hope so, so we can improve it. But uh, I, this is already what uh, we did until now. 
So, uh, yeah, if you want to create this, all these rules, it's quite uh, painful, or I think it's painful, I need to remember them. So I made a just small uh, bash script that, uh, uh, you call it like that, so you give the column name you want, and if there is a table that you want to avoid, select star from it, you just do it like that. It creates the, the rules for you, so you can add man as many rules. So how does it look like? Uh, hmm. Yeah. So we uh, select star from. I will show you after on live if we have time. But select star from customer. It was easy. What we're gonna have here? We're gonna have. Okay, you are not allowed to do that, right? Select first name, last name, CC name from customer. Also easy. What we will have? We will have the first name, the last name, and the this CC name uh, value uh, that will be. Uh, what you call it, uh, masked, right? Then more difficult. And then here I need to thank uh, Istoma here again. Oh, he's away. He was, he was here. So uh, I made some blog posts and uh, I got some contribution uh, or by emails or by comment to say, yeah, but if you do this query, what will happen? So this query is in two lines, right? My first rules, of course, <laughs> it failed completely, and uh, you, you had the, the content. So now, this is also by the query you have seen, we take care of that. So if the query is in multiple lines, it will work. If you make this CCNUM twice in the same, this is really uh, okay in MySQL, right? You can do that. My, the first rules we did without having this global, did, so when ProxySQL was only doing the regular expression and not the per regular expression, this one was hidden but not the other one. So now we take care of that. Now, uh, yeah, there is a space here, sorry, I forgot. But when we put uh, uh, some uh, um, with the application name, no, or was it on? It doesn't see. Yeah, here you don't see it because there, there are quotes, in fact. And this, they are removed by the, um, the syntax uh, um, that's highlighter. But here, uh, you see it's a bit of different font. So you, you have quotes, the, the back quotes. So back quotes, uh, single quotes, double quotes, all, all that is, uh, is taken care. Uh, and yeah, this one also in two lines, uh, it, it takes care of it. So this one is on two lines. This one is just because it's too long. It is when you have uh, uh, some uh, function before the field, it works too. Again, a extra example that we, that the rule, so all these with the rule I sent you, it will work. I mean, uh, you won't have the data, it will be uh, masked. So, uh, yeah, when you give uh, as T1, for example, and here you, you, you add an aliases, it, this is taken in uh, consideration. If you use CCNM and then you give an alias of it, you want to see fret and not CCNUM or not CCNUM, uh, concat CCNUM or whatever. So it will work. Same when there is not the has. Yeah, here again, you have the, the quotes that you don't see, but there are some quotes on the, on the slides. Uh, it takes care of it. Uh, again, here, this one has quotes. It takes care of it. And here, with the quotes too, uh, does work too. So all these uh, cases are. Uh, taken in consideration by the seven rules you have seen. Extra. So, uh, yeah, this is taking consideration. When you put comments, everything, it will work. You won't see the data. This also, you will take care of it. So it won't work. This one will be blocked. This one will be blocked. So all these cases are uh, handled by the proxy SQL with the rules. So it's quite already, let's say, uh, it goes far, maybe not enough for everybody, I don't know. And this is what uh, we would like to, uh, uh, we need you for feedback. So uh, do you have some ideas of queries that won't work? So if I make a prepare statement, I first I generate some string, say put it into variables by some calculation, then make a prepare statement, an execute statement, how do you check the content of the variable? And, uh, yeah, but your prepare statement will be already. Uh, the prepare statement means the char of three a plus char of something or mm -hmm. whatever concatenate something and whatever functions I can imagine. Yeah, I need to check. I need to test uh, to see what we can do. Uh, Yeah. 
if you have a, if you find this fancy ID, uh, send it to, send it to us, please, and we we're gonna test it. Well, I can add yeah. something else. Yes. I mean, this the idea of that I'm asking is also to uh, to not make exactly strict rules of the the queries that need to be executed, because another approach is just to block any sort of query with exception of whatever is whitelisted. But of course, it's become more complicated. Yes. If you can send us an email, we will try it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, but there is not there. Yeah, we started the slides with saying making this uh, in the database server in the just uh, after the Angular API, for example, would be the best. But this is not the case right now. So currently, we don't have. Yeah, but you need to write that information. So you need to, to, to write that uh, and see, so inter interfere with what the, the storage engine sends you and then verify, oh, this match what we don't want to see. And, uh, but this is quite also a lot of work to add it there for, uh, and uh, so, yeah. Yeah, it sounds easier for, for sure. Yeah, this sounds easier. Uh, it's not easier. This one is just, you have it. You can do it. If you need that now, today, you can do it like that. And first, maybe make some tests and parse all the queries your user are doing and just allow this one, block the other one, and mask the one that you know. And, uh, but you have it. No, if you have to wait for MySQL to implement it, I cannot give you, yeah, it will be next release. So uh, this is the difference. Here you have it. It doesn't cost you anything, uh, but maybe it's not perfect. Yes, TB. So the question is, what is the column name and the table name is the same? Uh, yeah, didn't try it. That uh, you, you are, uh, it's more crazy than me. So uh, I will test it and uh, I will see. But yeah. I will test it, or you can test it. This is uh, this is Proxy SQL. Take it on GitHub, compile it, and test it if uh, if you need it. Other questions? Yes. Yeah. Uh, right. The response is. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the question here is uh, why do we re don't rewrite the response we get from uh, MySQL instead of uh, writing the query we send to MySQL? And I will let Rene uh, explain you. Actually, this was a request I had, uh, I think, more than one year ago. And to, to be able to do this, the proxy need to understand the query. And currently, it does not understand the query because there is no parsing, so it doesn't understand what the query represents and what exactly uh, the query is asking. So it doesn't understand what is a column, what is a table, and so on. Uh, having, if the proxy will understand this, then what we'll do is that once the server replies, it will take the result set, make the modification, and send it to the client. It will be way greater overhead anyway. Because right now, whatever the, the server is responding is because it's already processed. Whatever is responding, the proxy just storing temporarily and then sending row by row or in batches depending from, from the protocol to the client. So there is no extra processing. Doing extra processing will be way more costly.
Yes. Yes, but you can have alias. So you can run a select cc, cc num as whatever, blah. And so the proxy won't know. Here we process it once when we send the data, right? So we do it once. Let's say you do a select and uh, you have thousand uh, records or you know, uh, thousand hundred, hundred thousand records and stuff like that. You will need for each rows modify it, and this is too much overhead for proxy SQL. In this way, the data never leave the database server. I don't know if that makes any difference when it comes to security constraint, but the data will never leave the database server. it again oh well you have so the question was what if the same proxy is used also for uh, production traffic and not just for development so the first thing uh, can, I, can I go back so here you see you have the username so all this transformation apply only to that user that might be the user used by the developers Yes, this. Yes, I mean, the question was about how to try to offload the main proxy in case there is too much processing here. And of course, you can always create multiple layer of proxy. So one proxy is sending traffic to the other, and you can, for example, decide to do the processing uh, in just one of the proxy while the other one is just forwarding traffic. and not being affected by uh, the times required for the processing. Uh, by the way, the proxy also collect metric on how much time is spent processing those rules. So it is easy to identify if processing those rules is a time consuming operation or not. I think we are out of time. So thank you very much. And uh, let's call the next speaker. Thank you, Renee.